Hello, my name is Jorge Pedret, and this is an introduction to Where Do the Adults Play? A Journey into Reclaiming Your Power to Play. The purpose of this video is to share with you some distinctions that will expand your territory and your possibilities to explore different places and different fields around playing and around playing with yourself and with others. The purpose of this video too is to find your X in the map. So playing. When did I lose my capacity to play? Why is playing even important in the midst of all of the changes that are happening in the world in, this, in the midst of this collapse of environment, collapse of society and collapse of our culture? And why is playing part of this? Why is, it, why is even in the picture? Shouldn't we be serious? Shouldn't we be taking this seriously and, and be sad about it and, and uh, just get, do serious things? And this, this was a question for me. And this is the, the question that is alive in, inside of me and the purpose of sharing this video. So playing, from playing, we get, when we started playing, you gotta start with, uh, yeah, when we were children, when I was a child, I was told many times over and over how much playing was bad for me, that it was childish, especially as I was growing up. I remember my dad saying, you're old enough now, you shouldn't be playing those games. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be playing. Playing is, where, where is your homework? Where are you gonna do your homework? You should be doing your homework. And we got into this place where I was suppressing my playing and I was putting up a face that it wasn't playful. It was just a serious face. And it, it started changing my capacity to play, started changing then. I started this this quest, this video, I started considering, like wondering, how can I be more of myself? How can I really be more of myself? How is that? I just want to like make a video and share myself with others. And it was a, a big quest just before starting this recording of how can I just be myself in front of the video and, and share what I want to share, like go to that place where I'm really in my curiosity. And it came that it's about what am I what am I learning? What am I really learning about? What am I really curious about? And I'm learning how to be myself again. And to me, being myself and playing is one. When I'm myself, I'm able to play, or I'm when I'm playing, I'm being myself. And also when I'm learning, I, I when I'm connected with my learning, my learning purpose, I'm connected with my sense of where I want to play and how do I want to play. The quality of playing completely changes. Which brings me to the quality of, of playing and the types of games that uh, that we can play. And this is part of the a map that is called the three games. And as I when I was a child, I remember like starting to play these games like hide and seek or uh, what is the other one? Tag. And these are all these games are uh, part of the first type of games. The first type of game is a win lose game. You know, what you I I win and you lose, and this is a 
based on competition and scarcity. This is based on survival. Yeah, like surviving. I need to survive, so I need to escape from you. I need to hide from you, or I need to catch you to survive. I need to find you to survive. And this is part of the first game. The first game is I win, you lose. And how this is relevant in my life is that this is like the, the first game that I was taught to play here in Earth with my brothers, uh, my siblings, with my cousins, with my neighbors. <clears throat> and then as as uh, the other, the second game, the second type of game that I that I was learning to play, um, or the second type of game is that I win and you win, or I lose and you lose. And the I win and you win, this is a, a cooperative. Like we set certain agreements and we set up the 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 game so that so that at the end of the game you win and I win. And this sounds like sounds amazing. It is amazing. And and still there is something about this that that it it, it doesn't it's not it's not like using all of our intelligence, it's not using all of our learning. There is like a sort of like compromise there. And this is part of the I lose, you lose game too. The I lose, you lose is like the compromise where well if i'm gonna lose you're gonna lose too something something like this like revenge and and all of these uh, gnarly games where or games where we really like war for example like in war there might be some people that that win some money but for example in the field where there is like the, the fighters these fighters and these fighters are just like <laughs> killing killing each other and everybody's just like seeing their friends dying in front of them. That's a an example of a lose lose game. And there might be other people that are playing the bigger game that they might be winning, and, but also they're part of this I win, they lose, or I win, you lose game, which goes back to the the first type of game. And there is a a third type of game. A third type of game that uh, is neither of those is neither I win you lose or I win I, you win or I lose you lose, and this third type of game is called winning happening. And the difference between winning happening and the first two games is that, and I see it, this will be really helpful to have a a notebook or something I'll, I'll share the the screen here so i'm reading it from here okay there we go i don't know i hope you can all see this yeah the first kind of game is i win you lose competition survival not enough resources the second type of game is I win, you win. This is a cooperative. And it can seem like the this is the best case scenario so far. This is the best I knew. Like, holy, if I can create a game where you win and I win, then that's the best game I can create. And the other, the worst game I can create is that I lose and you lose. Like the example that we talked about war. And the third, game that i wanted to share with you is winning happening and in winning happening is an infinite game there is no end to it there is the the winning is constantly happening uh, you the the purpose of the game is to continue playing the game the, the purpose of the game is not winning or losing the purpose of the game is to continue playing the game and this kind of game, we call it winning happening. And it's a co-creative, co-intelligent, there's collaboration happening. 
and it springs out of our bright principles. <clears throat> and bright principles, we will talk about that later, but it's the, the principles, like our principles. Right on. So when did you lose capacity to play? And this this is a journey towards um, where is it? I lost it. Well, this is a journey towards I don't need to share the screen anymore. This is an experiment that I did at the beginning of my journey of reclaiming my power to play. And this experiment is very simple. And this is called, the, ex the name of the experiment is called um, Consciously Disapprove of Play. And you will need a notebook, you will need a pencil, and you will need 20 minutes. And at the top of your page, you will write down, playing is bad because. And then for 20 minutes, you'll write whatever comes to you. In that page, like all dedicated to, to this 20 minutes, you start writing, writing, don't stop yourself. Like you just go into that place. It's okay to be harsh. It's okay to, to say uh, the, the really worst thing things like don't limit yourself like playing is bad because and you just like say like the, the words that the teacher said the words that your parents said that your uh, uncles or friends or people that of authority whatever they say to you about playing and write it all down here and this is like the first experiment in in opening up that a power that is inside of you there to to play to really like go out there and like say like what happened what happened to me and after after you have all that writing that that is the end of of the experiment you now you have a writing that where you you made it conscious it's no longer in the subconscious it's no longer a hidden thing or a very old thing it's present it's in your paper and you have it there and there is a second part of this experiment where you bring it to your team or you share it with others uh, on your team or you ask somebody to, to hold space for you to, to read it. And, but this is uh, the first part of it. And I will only share this part for now. This will also, this experiment will help you to get closer to finding your X in the map. Where are you in this? three types of games. What kind of games are you playing? And there is, yeah, it will get you closer to those, to those, to your finding wh wh where you are in the map. Anyways, there is a, another, another map that i want to show you that will help you like help us like tune in like where where you are in the map and this is the map of um, map of the two dramas and the map of the two dramas it talks about uh, two different two different types of dramas that are possible and in one of them, actually, I feel like I'm going a bit too fast. I'll, I'll show you the what I'm talking about. In terms of the, the this war example that I painted uh, about like the soldiers and like the like shooting at, at each other, that there is nobody winning in that game. Nobody is winning in in a game where you're shooting each other. So there's a lose lose game. And it, it, nothing changes other than like people die, um, time passes, and it gets, it, it gets, uh, yeah, it's completely purposeless. Like it, it doesn't serve 
um, the, the, the child, it doesn't say serve a, a evolution, the evolution of, of the human being. And so the, this kind of example, it will be part of um, a low drama. Also another example of, so yeah, these are the two dramas, the low drama and the high drama. And I will share my screen for this. All righty. This guy here, I think this is Clinton dressed up like a mariachi or pistolero. And this is the page of low drama. And and the map of it, you can learn more about low drama here. But basically what is what is happening in low drama is avoiding uh, your responsibility to be alive. And I wish there was a map here, but there is no, not a map. That's great. There is some videos here that you can watch. Low, low drama is based on the survival. Like you're surviving, you're like the, like the world is a dangerous place where you can die and your, your main purpose of it is surviving. So there is nothing other than surviving. Surviving is the only possibility. And everything uh, revolves around surviving and, and staying alive. And this kind of game, where the, this kind of drama is not really living. It's not living, like living in a, in, a, in a way that you're only surviving is not life. There is something else that is possible. <clears throat> and saying that there is a low drama it, uh, implies that there is a high drama. And the high drama is what this program, this journey is about because high drama is playing full out. High drama is living your life full out. High drama is using your life for another purpose other than surviving. So in terms of the games that we, that we talked about in the third game, the third type of game, which is winning happening is high, high drama or high level fun, high quality food for your life living your life full out and the, this part this is uh, the the essential part like how do we make this uh, uh something else other than surviving how can i like go beyond my my own mechanisms that i created to survive to that are limiting me from playing from being more than i think i can be And this is precisely the, the journey that, that we're going into. How are we going from playing the first type of game and the second type of game to playing a game of winning happening where there is no end? The, on, the, the only end is to continue playing. The, the end is to play. The end is to, to create winning. And this is like the... The, the purpose of this is yeah to go beyond surviving and it, it's amazing for for myself like how much i had no idea how much surviving was part of part of my my whole life part of um, like how i how i said things how i control my feelings how i related with others how i will write down things how i will the fine work, how I relate with my children and with my par partner, the stories that, that I will generate that I, I will say, like, yeah, the, these are the stories and, and this is what's happening to me. In the low drama, there is three characters that are the, the essential part of the, the low drama. And they work as a triangle. Uh, they work as a triangle of three different roles that are the, the players of low drama. 
there is, without these players, there is no low drama. <clears throat> Actually, without one of those players, there is no low drama. But as soon as there is one of those players, there, there, there can be low drama. And all these players, they work together to create the low drama of surviving the game of um, I win, you lose, of I, you lose, you lo I, I lose, you lose, or I win, you win. And this, yeah, is in terms of the stories that I will create, I will create stories where I was a victim. I was a victim of the world. I was a victim of of society for not creating the, the space for, for me and my family to be, for not protecting the forest, for not uh, providing a, a safe space for, for me to develop, for, for me to continue playing, for me to use my, my skills and my, my superpowers. So uh, for a long time before I knew this, I was making myself a victim of of society, a victim of people, a victim of others. And I could spin this story anytime I, I wanted. I could spin this story anytime, uh, whenever I saw the evidence, I find the evidence in a person, like I have an interaction with somebody, I see the evidence, this person is not supporting me, this person is uh, supporting the, uh, the extinction of the human species or this person is supporting the, the consumption of the resources uh, or, the, or the life of planet earth and i could spin the, the story just like that and i will be in a victim space i mean like uh, is their fault that uh, that this is happening to me and to the world and to many others in the world so it was a huge story that i i was completely en entitled to to make it so and and even from there automatically i i had the possibility to be to go to the to, to the next role so the, the first role is the the victim role where I, i'm a victim um i also had stories that i was a victim from my parents i was a victim of my parents for the from the way that they raised me from the ways that they didn't care for me that they didn't hold space for me that they didn't care about my feelings, that that they didn't uh, help me develop my gifts in art and music and in nature even more. And I had stories, yeah, where I was an unconscious story that where I was a, a victim of their ignorance or a victim of their uh, incapacities. And the, the first step, the the next step after becoming a victim is becoming like like this next step of like wait like i don't like i don't i don't want to be a victim like i i, I have a choice i have there is something i can do and, and from this place of gaining power over being a victim um comes the next role where you become a persecutor you say uh, like you you have no right to be killing the planet like this you who do you think you are to to be using the the resources like that or like you're uh, in compassionate you're not you're not having compassion for the the human beings and like because of you uh, all of the human beings are like a lot of human beings are suffering you're and you're helping maintain the chain of 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 the hierarchy that is like keeping all of these powers in place. <clears throat> so this is the this is the voice of the persecutor, where he's like blaming, using blame to say like, uh, like I'm okay and you're not okay, and you gotta go down. And and this is like, uh, I'm becoming a persecutor of the person that was that I was a victim of. So also the person that I was a victim of, he was my persecutor. I was making them a persecutor. When I had my, my stories of victim, I was making society 
a persecutor. I was making government a persecutor or I was making the world a persecutor or, or my parents. They were my, my personal persecutors. And when I uh, took, took up that step to uh, above the to become above the victim, I I became their persecutor. I was like, no, this is not what's happening. So, uh, so this is like part of part of the role that that tips where I, I now I become their persecutor. Now that I'm pointing them out and they say like, you are wrong and you are you're not supposed to be doing that. And and inside of this, sometimes it happens. For example, in, to just like make it like a like create an, another person into this. So we have society. We have me that I'm playing the victim and a victim of society. Society's persecutor. I'm the victim. Then the next role, the other role that that is part of these three different roles, is the. Uh, there comes somebody that observes the victim and he sees the victim he takes pity for the victim and he's like oh poor poor victim that should not be happening that should not be happening to them that the, the persecutor really needs to know its his boundaries so it comes this active 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 role third role in between those two that the rescuer, it, this is the, it will be the rescuer that is uh, rescuing the victim. He's saying that the victim needs to be saved. The victim doesn't have a uh, possibility of saving themselves. And, and just so I can make a, a clear, uh, something clear right now that the, the, this is not right or wrong. This is neither good or bad. What's happening here is not neither good or bad. It's like uh, the way I will describe it is like an essential, like like the most basic game. This is the most basic game that we can play. This is the the bottom ground. This is the the the, the underworld play that game that we can play, <clears throat> which is the bottom the bottom line. The 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 least conscious game that we can play because this conscious this game is play is played completely unconsciously. I wasn't aware I was playing that game until I became aware that I was playing that game. And comes the rescuer. He rescues the victim. He says, like, here I, I will help you. And also the, the rescuer sometimes become a persecutor of the persecutor. And and just like this, like it's so easy to switch from one to the other, like the changes happen like that. Like you can be a victim in one second and the next second you can be a rescuer and the next second you can be a persecutor. And and it all goes like, if you like start noticing, like watch it in movies, watch it around people around you, uh, how it's happening, not, notice it like in, in the lineups, when you're in a lineup to, to send a, 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 a mail or something like this, like notice it, like what people are talking about and start noticing these different roles. Where What role are they playing? What role are they playing now? And more often than not, more often than not, you'll, you'll start noticing these three different roles, like moving from one place to another. Oh, I, I wish the, I, the, 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 the price of the gas just went up and now I can't afford it. And this is terrible that the government is like really putting 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 us down and they're terrible and they, they, we really should be uh, selecting different people for the, the government and look at what's happening in the world. Like, uh, so yeah, it's like any stories where you are victimizing yourself or making yourself a victim of something else is part of this game any any of those stories and and it's part of the, this this part of reclaiming your power to play because is because in becoming conscious of the games that you are already playing these are the games that you are already playing this is the biggest game that humanity is playing right now low drama game where 
There gets to be a victim, there gets to be a persecutor, and there gets to be a rescuer. And between those three, the, the, it, stays, it stays there kind of like in an unconscious game, a potential, a potential to become something else a potential to be uh, to grow out of out of that game uh but it, as long as it remains unconscious that you're a victim of the game that you play or uh, you're not choosing the game that you want to play you will be playing that game that is the default game if you're not playing any other game if you don't know what games you're playing you're likely playing um this low drama game so so far i've shared quite a bit about about these three three different this will help you like find your x in the map of where are you at are you playing a low drama game what what roles are you playing what's your favorite role to play what patterns this is a whole journey this is the beginning of the journey i'm just painting here the very beginning of the journey and it's an amazing journey in reclaiming your power to play We are, you or you are, we are already playing a game. There is a game that is always a play. Like life, life is a game. What game are you playing? Are you conscious of the games that you are playing? Are you choosing the games that you are playing? And this is your power, the power that you have to to choose the games that you play, <clears throat> that you can. You can decide. I want to continue playing those games, and, and even for the first part of the journey, it won't even be possible to play anything else. You will be just splitting part of your attention. This is the experiment: split, split part of your attention, so that you can notice what role, I, what game are you playing. You take part of your attention to notice that. That'll be the experiment for for this next part to develop. What game am I playing? And start noticing this, the, the triangle. And, and just notice it for now, just notice it, what happens? What is the quality of, of awareness in that moment? Uh, what is the reward that you get? What is the benefit that you get from playing this game? How are you winning? How are you losing? What is the end of the game? And and then only from there you start seeing that the pain, the pain that it is to to be playing an unconscious game. Because uh, once you remove the victim out of that game, that triangle disappears. That triangle, of that game disappears. If there is no victim, there is no low drama. If there is no victim, there is nobody for the rescuer to rescue. If there is no persecutor. If there is no victim, there is nobody for the persecutor to persecute. So the way that you take responsibility and that you take your power to play is by really creating the undermining the the victim the victim role that you're playing and saying uh, and wondering is it. Is this the only game that I can play? Is this the, the only game that is available for me right now to play victim? And you can become a victim of anything. Anything that you, anything like you can become a victim of, of anything. It's so easy to find the evidence out there. Not easy, it's, it's, uh, it's so possible. It's so, it's like, if that's, if that's a, that, that is the level of unconsciousness of this game that, if you don't think that there is an option, if you don't even consider that there is something else is possible, then that that will be the default. Like I'm being a victim of of my partner's uh, anger, and I, I'm being a victim of 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 myself. I'm being a victim of, of my own uh, stupidity, or uh, and there is like the all of these ways that like you can go from like inside of you to outside to the whole world to to your circle to your family so 
is really the like a core foundation that creates like the first game. The first game is low drama, and which is a, the, the basic game. It's not good or bad. It's just like consider that to play something else other than victim, where you are uh, unconsciously calling somebody for somebody to rescue you, um, and unconsciously making somebody your persecutor. That that is the that is the game, and consider what what other games are possible, and. The other, the other games that are possible is winning, happening. And that is a journey that we can go into to discover what is this? What is a, what is a high, high level fun? What is winning, happening? How do we play that? <laughs> that will be the game. How am I, my, how I can be myself and, and allow myself to, to not go into, into those patterns of, uh, who am I and how can I be myself and how can I not beat myself up into playing for, for playing the low drama game wow so we, we cover quite a bit of territory here we, we talked about the three types of games and we talked about the low drama and the high drama Yeah, the, the low drama, the, the purpose of it is surviving. It's really like just surviving and doing anything to survive. So once you consider that there might be something else other than surviving, then other possibilities will start like, coming to you. Your team. Yeah, finding your team, finding your team to play, um, to play the game. Like part of the purpose of this this journey is also finding your team to play. And playing with others, it's amazing. Like right now, I'm I'm playing by myself. I'm playing uh, um, an imaginary game where. You're out there, but right now there is no other consciousness that I'm having this conversation with, other than with the computer, with the with the text that I that I wrote. Uh, I had the idea of having this meeting with with a group of people and having this uh, as an introduction where we can like explore these territories together, and I didn't manifest. And I decided to just make an introduction video about what is the journey that I'm, I'm presenting. <clears throat> so part of the purpose of this journey is that you need a team. You need a team to really escape this, the unconscious game. The, the unconscious game of low drama is so ingrained in us and is so pervasive, is so ubiquitous all over, all over the place. Like your parents play it, your school teachers, they play it, the government people, they play it. The, uh, global nations they play the it's played in in such a ubiquitous way that that you really need a team of other people that are exploring this territory to escape that it, it cannot be done by yourself and you can explore certain parts by yourself but eventually once you like explore, like start like finding these other possibilities, you're going to want to find other people that want to play with you because there are other people there that also want to uh, play a, a conscious game. There are also other people there that are reclaiming their power to play. And there are, we have the, this, the a capacity or like a, a huge curiosity, like, well, what can we do? who can we be what games can we play when we're not playing only these games of blaming each other or of, of jealousy or of scarcity or or being a victim and then you rescue me and then we persecute that one and then we switch around it's like a like discovery like a discovery process that this new field that is opening up of exploring 
what what his playing look like. He's so big and he's so exciting and ecstatic that you're going to want to find a team to play with and find other people to play with. And this is very exciting to me. There is uh, many different teams out there of uh, edge workers, healers, uh, permaculture groups, men's circle, women's circle, and uh, researchers. There is like all sorts of different groups out there, different teams uh, that um, are really creating this new uh, this new field, they're exploring this new field together and creating essentially collaboration between the teammates to to support each other in their evolution and to help each other grow, to play together, to escape this like deeply ingrained pattern of uh, unconscious games that we have. So find your team, get your team, and and let your team, uh, like kind of like like shine that part of you that you can see. Let your team like show you that part of you that you can see because inside of yourself you have like this uh, like a box that uh, only that is like a, a, a limitation of of what you what is possible and what is not possible. And your team has this has a capacity to to bring the light into places that you're not able to see. For example, right now uh, I'm not able to see myself. Like my eyes are here and they're pointing out. I can they kind of like see a bit of my nose when I look here. I can see my hands, but my face, my mouth, I cannot see other than in the reflection of the computer. Uh, so from this sense, like when you have a team, it's almost like your your own self disappears and you can allow your team's feedback to become part of your reality. So this is also like a way to escape your own uh, fantasy world, to escape your own self, self-deception, self-illusion. You're kind of like opening up your bubble and letting go of your own preconceptions of who you are and allowing your team to become those uh, points of awareness to reflect back to you what they are seeing and for you to to trust your team. Yeah, like developing trust in your team. This is a huge part of uh, uh, learning to play a, a different game, like navigating towards high drama. Finding finding your team will be part of this process, part of this journey into these next four weeks. Will be finding your team to play with and and creating experiments with them, going into journeys with them, navigating into spaces uh, with them, being uncomfortable, receiving feedback, and 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 there is another big part of of this that I haven't actually mentioned which is the, the exploration of, of your feelings. Your feelings. In, in, in the way that society taught me, the way that society, my parents and the, the school teachers, they, they taught me, they, they never like said, uh, anything about my feelings like my feelings was kind of like this thing that it became too much and then it was, things are getting in the way and then I they have to shush me uh, when it became too loud <clears throat> or when the feelings became too much the, there was like these big consequences there was big consequences um, my my parents for example when I, when I would get um really joyful when I was like full full of joy and like just screaming and, and running around and 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 playing they they will be like hey be quiet you're you're 
making too much noise or um, saying it will be when when I'll be either like scared or or sad and I will be like sobbing crying because something something happened and I'll be crying uh, when uh, and it will be loud it will be really loud then it will be like like this uh, shh and wanting to and like shut up my like these voices from my parents yeah. saying shut up or saying um I, I remember my my dad will say something like you're you're squealing like a pig you're squealing stop squealing and and there is all of this that was my initial uh that was my my initial encounter with like how, how to deal with my feelings this is like how I started developing that um, relationship with my feelings like what are my feelings uh, uh, what are they for and how do I use them and how do I interact with them and <clears throat> and it, it became it, uh, yeah there is this deep ingrained teaching from my parents and from society that feelings are bad that my feelings are bad. There's something that gets in the way. There's something that um, creates trouble. They are dangerous. Uh, they are too much, and and they need to be hidden. They need to be essentially like put put down. Like don't don't bring that up. Like don't bring it up because it, it will be a, a big deal. You'll, you'll make a scene. It's gonna make a scene. And, you're gonna get in trouble for that, for sure. I will, I will get beat up. I will get beat up from having uh, expressing my feelings when I was a kid. I remember like getting into fights with my brother, getting into like fights. We were like arguing or like shouting at each other with our full anger or like uh, screaming at each other and like our parents coming and breathing and trying to calm us down, either trying to calm us down to 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 not do that or or they will like punish us or they will um, threaten us, they will threaten us. And uh, that will be how we learn, how I learn to deal with with feelings. Now, whenever I was feeling angry, um, I I couldn't feel angry because it was too much. Uh, I was told from my parents, "You can kill your brother. You can, you're, you're too dangerous. You're heavy. You're you're the older one. You're the oldest one. So you 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 can kill your brother. You can really hurt him." Um, uh, when I whenever I was feeling sad, I, I will be like sent to my room. Uh, I will be threatened by my dad, and that I will that he will that he will beat me so that I will have a real reason to cry. And yeah, so there was yeah there were all these kind of like pun uh, punishing methods uh, in our in our home where I where I learned about that about like uh, what what is our feelings. And and just like I I learned in that way, like I learned to be my own self censoring uh, mechanism. I learned to censor my own feelings. I learned to uh, stop uh, my feelings, stop feeling the feelings, and and just go somewhere else. In a way, uh, I learned to rescue myself from my feelings. Uh, from from that pattern of the the three the, the three different roles of the low drama, I learned to rescue myself from my feelings. So I learned to like victimize myself that I was feeling feelings. I will feel bad that I was a victim. I will feel uh, I will feel bad. I will feel a victim of my sadness. I will feel bad that I was uh, sad because all of a sudden I wasn't a man or I wasn't uh, 
I wasn't strong. I was I was weak. I was uh, noisy. I was useless. I was uh, annoying. Uh, is, uh, and and this is not like purposeful. This is not helping the people around me. And and I learned, yeah, like, I learned to like censor myself. Like whenever I was feeling sadness, I would like feel something else. Like something else will come to to stop my feeling of sadness, so that I could feel something else. So that something else that is more useful uh, will come will come into place. And just like that, like I created mechanisms inside of me to kind of like uh, yeah, to like work with my feelings. And it became this mechanical thing, like a mechanical uh, device that it will like create logical things. Whenever I'm feeling sadness, then feel fear and whenever i'm feeling fear then feel your anger and and it's not okay to feel anger so uh you like feel some joy like feel some joy so there was like this <laughs> like a fake a fake joy that that was like really powered by my anger and i it was completely unconscious before until i started going deep into the feelings work and feeling, practicing my feelings uh, with a team uh, and with these distinctions of the low drama and the high drama. And uh, it revealed this mechanism inside of me that I created that so that I would not be alive inside of my feelings. Like my feelings will like go from here to there, from here to there, from here, and then, and then have like this like external layer that was like completely there like in a way it was like a mask like completely a mask of only showing like my like a, a smile whenever i will feel uh, like my my life was in danger or that uh there was a uh something that I, I i was losing maybe i would feel like i was losing and i needed to defend myself and it will come a smile, a very, very unconscious smile uh, that will be from my fear and and is towards the towards the more recent time it, it became like such an incontrollable like I could not control it like in these like situations where it was really like bringing up that game, unconscious game that I was playing. It would like be like I could not control it. I was like. And I, I'll be like almost like in like this like incontrollable uh, smile, an incontrollable like I I would call it like laughter, but it, it wasn't even it, it was I I could not control it. it was like out of, out of my control. I didn't know why it was happening. There was something very serious happening outside, like I was doing some some very like like serious work with with women uh with my partner and like there was like this incontrollable smile and like and i was like why am i smiling when there's like this like this, this situation that is really not a situation where i want to smile or where i'm supposed to smile like like i'm talking about like how i'm I'm talking to my partner about how I'm getting, like, I have an unconscious pattern of getting revenge uh, about about her or, like, uh, and there's, like, these, like, serious, like, things that, that I want to, to share that I was sharing in that moment. And there was an inc unconscious smile and I've been uh, de debunking it and uh, deconstructing it and, like, I, it became clear about this mechanism that I had, that I created when I was a child from all the punishment that my parents, uh, punishment, the threats and that my parents and my society gave around me around my feelings. Uh, they say that crying is bad, feeling sad is bad, feeling scared is, is bad, feeling angry is bad, and feeling joy is okay, but not so much. Something like that. If you go like 
in too much joy, it's also like destructive. Like, and that's not okay. That's, that that is part of the, the the old map. So the this map is uh, this how this plays inside of like reclaiming your power to play is in creating finding where you are inside of this map this map will give you like a really good idea of where you are in your in your where is your x in the map and there is a, an old old map of feelings where the feelings are good or bad where like like there is the three feeling the like your sadness your fear and your anger they're bad and your um, feeling joy is good but it is it can also be bad because if you're like full of joy and walking in the street out there um, with like radiant, radiant joy and being loud and taking space with joy, people will start asking like, oh, what drug are you on? What drugs are you taking? Like, uh, oh, and like, and like dismissing you like, oh, he's just like, escaping reality. He's, he's not in reality. He's not connected. He's not in this world. He's in another world. So there is all, like all of these ways that feeling your feelings is not okay, and that is part of the the old map of feelings. And what I discover now is that there is a new map of feelings where you develop a new relationship with your feelings, <clears throat> and this new relationship with your feelings is in in this basic line agreement that is in the middle. That says feelings are neither good or bad. Feelings are neither good or bad. Feeling sad is neither good or bad. Feeling angry is not good or bad. And your feelings are essential energy and information to run your life. They're part of your life and they're essential energy and information. Each feeling that, that comes to you, each uh, yeah, each feeling that comes to you, whether it is any of, of those feelings that I mentioned before, uh, each one of those, they, they, each one of those, they have information, crucial, essential information for your life, and and this starts creating a a, a new relationship. Uh, with your feelings and this is like that move like from going from being in survival and being a uh, uh, being playing on conscious game being playing a, a game of a victim or a game of uh, a poor me or or like a persecutor or rescuer towards not making myself a victim of my feelings and this is huge this was this is huge step that for me it allowed me to to stand here to play to be myself and to do something different to really like take a stand and to face the fear and to face all of the resistance that i had of feeling my feelings feelings are loud feelings are like really loud they are connected with with your throat and the, the higher they can be uh, feel, felt from 0% intensity to 100% intensity. And in this new map of feelings, there is uh, four feelings, four basic feelings. And just uh, from the combination of those four feelings, then uh, the whole, uh, whole gallery of different feelings come. Uh, you can think about it like the the primary colors like you have the the set of the primary colors and then from the combination of those primary colors you get the combination of the uh, different colors like from yellow and red you get orange and in that way from from mixing sadness uh, and uh, and anger uh, you get or from mixing, let's say, from mixing sadness and joy, you get nostalgia, for example. Uh, from mixing uh, fear and uh, from mixing fear and and sadness, you get something like like jealousy, for example. Or or you can like 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 go to the other feeling, like for example, 
I feel uh, I feel guilty. Uh, I feel let's start with less I feel frustrated. <clears throat> and I can like like really like sense that in my body. Like I feel frustrated. I feel frustrated. I feel frustrated. So as soon as I like let that that feeling uh, land in my body and I really feel the frustration, I can like sense like, oh, okay, this is a mix of feelings. And I can like sense inside of this frustration that there is anger. I have some anger and I have fear. And I can say I have, I have a fear, fear that there is something uh, that I'm, uh, that is like, um, that there is an information there that is for me. Something like that, that there is a, I have fear that, that this thing that is frustrating me, uh, that is, um, that it, it's really something I need to pay attention to. Uh, so in like that, in that way, you can start like, like any feeling that you have, you can find a way of how it's composed by these four basic mm -hmm. feelings. And the four, the four basic feelings are that, that in the way that we're studying it, that I'm studying it is um, anger, joy, fear, and sadness. Anger, joy, fear, and sadness. Anger, joy, fear, and sadness. So it's four feelings, and this map, it looks like a, a quadrant. I will show it here. I know we're almost on time for finishing this uh, video recording, and I think this will be one of the last things I will share with you. Uh, four feelings. And all of these maps you can find in the... Um, okay, here it is for feelings. Yeah, all of these maps you can all of these maps you can find in the spaceport um, of the spaceport of the game world called startover.xyz. Startover.xyz. It's a. It, it came from this from exploring these territories. It came from exploring, from discovering, and from exploring the territories of low drama, and starting like creating bridges to something, something new, like high level drama, high level drama, and and really mapping out these different territories, and all of this research has been put online in this uh, website, and this bubble of websites because it's over four hundred websites, and it, uh, this is called. Uh, startover.xyz if you type that on your browser startover.xyz you you will get to this bubble of space and uh, there is a spaceport which has a list of all of these different maps and resources and processes and and it's a work in progress but it's really amazing that the richness of uh, information that is shared in there and inside of there, you will find the map of four feelings, which I, I will share with you here. This is what the map of four feelings looks like. Anger, uh, joy, fear, and sadness. And it's very basic, uh, but inside of those, you can see how there can be different combinations of these four feelings to create all the gallery of feelings and that, that we can experience. And it, the distinction is that you need your feelings. You need your feelings to feel alive. And, to, and feeling alive is part of what part of playing full out. If you're, you cannot play full out, you cannot live a life full out without being alive in your feelings. If you're like repressing any of this, 
you will be like putting yourself out of balance and like still like repressing your own nature. You still like be putting down your own nature, uh, putting down like the, this rocket fuel that is inside of you to to fuel your life, to fuel your game. To you need your anger to to choose something different that, other than that game of low drama. You need. Uh, you need your sadness to to feel the the pain that it is to continue playing a game that doesn't fulfill your life that keeps you in survival. You need your your sadness to to get in touch with with your softness, with your softness to play with, and with that pain of of playing a game that is consuming the the resources of the planet Earth and con that consuming life on Earth. And you need you need your fear to really be in touch with with what is uh, like truly a, a a threat or what is like truly something that that can um it can be the reason that you that you are doing or something that the other person is doing is this fear is such a subtle it has such a subtle energy uh, and. And like a lot of these like new age, uh, new age uh, beliefs, where it's like positive thinking and like oh it's love, choose choose love or don't, or don't choose fear. It, it's like the ego. It kind of is a shift. Like it doesn't really fit inside of this map. That that way of thinking it doesn't really fit fit inside of this map. Fear is neither good or bad. It's a part of your resources, and it's part of this essential energy that can like really like have such a big information about the world around you, and about your relationship with others, about timing, about um, about what is really really happening out there. What what is like who like is is great for learning who who's playing what game something like this and you need yeah you need your joy to allow yourself to to be that to take up that space of, of joy and celebration and of uh, winning happening winning happening happenings through through that joy winning happening happens through like being a, in uh, alive in all of in all of your feelings so feelings are loud. Your being is loud. Feelings can take up a lot of space, especially when, so I mean, I said before that you can go from zero to 100% in expressing your feelings. And when they're at 100%, they're the loudest. They're really like the loudest you can get. This is like the highest intensity you can express your, your feelings. And and when you're doing that consciously, when you're expressing your anger consciously at a hundred percent, this is called escalating and escalating your feeling of anger. And that is the the purpose of doing this is so that uh, you you get the information from the feelings, so that you get like what information is uh, my anger trying to tell me. Uh, what information is my sadness telling me or my fear or my joy <clears throat> and this is part of playing full out that you are not a victim of your feelings like feeling sad is not a, a, a bad thing but feeling sad is actually something that is fulfilling your purpose in life and that is fulfilling yeah your next step in in playing and your next step in playing uh, together with a team uh, or your next step in playing a, a different game your next step in in creating what you came to create in this world this is the, the purpose of your feelings and uh, understanding your feelings and working with your feelings and how they are connected to reclaiming your power to play and there is, from here, um, many other distinctions that I would like to 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 bring, and 
the, there is a distinction that is important that I want to share right now. And it's a distinction between uh, feelings and emotions. And the difference between feelings and emotions is that uh, emotions are something that happened in the past that didn't get completed. Or emotions are feelings that happen in the past that didn't get completed. In a way, you had this big, intense moment that where something happened that triggered your emotions. There was, for example, a huge, uh, big fear of something. My parents, for example, coming like chasing me with, with a big spoon to to beat me up and and like the, these huge uh, moments of, of fear where I felt the feelings I felt like in, like high intensity feeling and I didn't have the the space to to express it I didn't have the space to use that feeling I didn't have the space to to go to to use that feeling for for creating and in a way it got repressed I repressed it I I brought it I put it uh, I said, like, it's not safe to feel my fear. So I'm I'm going to pretend I'm going to, like, just, like, not feel my fear or or cap my fear. I'll say, like, this is how much fear as I can feel. And and inside of there, there I made a decision to that it wasn't safe to feel my fear. So this, this emotion, it gets... Mm, uh it gets perpetuated it gets perpetuated in time like i um like i look for as i grow up and i grow up and i look for other places uh or like this pattern just keeps repeating in my life where uh, i feel like the same situation is happening and the same feelings are happening and i go and i get emotionally triggered so when I get emotionally triggered, is uh, I'm relieving that emotion from something that happened in the past. Yes, it may have nothing to do with what's happening in the present moment. Something that happened in the past, and and I'm just like relieving the the emotion. So emotions they can they can last uh, a long time. Yeah, the emotions that can really last a long time, which is, um, so they can be there for uh, hours. They can be there for days. They can be there for weeks or even for months. Even in like yeah, like emotions can even be there for like uh, thirty years, as I have found out in my own uh, research. And. And the difference uh, with uh, from emotions and feelings is that feelings are from this moment. For feelings are from something that is happening in this present moment, and they they emerge. You can like feel them in your emotional center in your heart, and you can say like, "Oh, this is my fear. Hello, fear. Welcome, fear." And then you can like like really connect with what the the feeling is message is and the energy that it brings so you connect with those two things you connect with the message and with the energy that it brings and you use that you use that you use the energy to move to do what you need to do you you use the message to to learn what is the what is happening and then you use those two things together. You use the, the message and the energy to, to move and do the things that you, you need to do. And then the feeling moves on and something else uh, happens. The feeling comes, it arrives, you get the message, you get the energy, you use it and it moves on. And this happens in no more than three minutes. So when there is a feeling, that comes and stay for more than three minutes is very likely, um, most possibly, uh, that you're that you're having an emotion. 
And that is not something about the present moment. That is something from the past. And that because you haven't done the process of doing, of healing that emotion, that means like completing that emotion, uh, then it, it stays it continues to trigger in your present life. It continues to trigger in your in your adult life. And the, this can be really this is terrible because for me this was and the this yeah this was blocking me from connecting with others, connecting from myself and connecting with community, with my circle for a long time because I had patterns inside of me that were in competition, that were in survival, that were triggered, like easily triggered. And as soon as I, I will be emotionally triggered, I will have no distinction. I will say like, this is reality. This is what's happening. I'm being betrayed. This person is betraying me and I'm being excluded. I'm being uh, rejected. I'm, like I'm being gossiped about and somebody's talking about me on my backs or this person hates me and they want to kill me. And I, I need to, I go into that survival mode. I go into survival where I, <clears throat> where I need to do something to survive. And this wasn't really information that was happening in the present. It was information that was from the past, from something that happened very long time in the past and that I was bringing into this present time. And... Yeah, and with feelings, it's about the present time. Like you, you, the more you're able to like, like, kind of like climb, like and like, like heal those uh, on healed emotions, uh, which happens through teamwork and for and as and doing emotional healing processes. Then uh, you you can like start getting more and more clarity. You start navigating out of the slump, navigating out of the, of the survival uh, game. You start navigating out of out of the this uh, game that kind of like locks you in into an unconscious game, where like there is assumptions of like what game we're playing and who who you are and what you are not, and what you can do and what you cannot do, and what is possible, what is not possible. So through doing this emotional healing process, you start completing these very old feeling, very old emotions that haven't been completed since childhood and even sometimes from past lifetimes and childhood from the womb, from when you were in the womb of your mother. Uh, all of these emotions, they, there is a possibility of completing them, of being in a space of an emotionally healing process where somebody else is holding space for you to, to feel your feelings and uh, complete, complete the communication where you, you have these feelings, you allow the feelings to get as big as they really are, and they, they get loud, they get really loud, they get sounds, big sounds, and and so uh, and then the, the other person that is holding space is able to, to complete back. Yeah, you're feeling sad because uh, you were you were taken away from your parents, uh, uh, as soon as you were born <clears throat> and and this when the the space holder completes the communication the communication all of a sudden gets complete and you don't have to go into that uh, it, like it's not necessary because the communication was completed and you don't need to say it anymore it doesn't need to live inside you anymore it's been completed you can move on you can you have one more layer outside to feel your feelings, which are about the present moment. Um, and this is amazing because it, it, it reclaims your, your own power of playing by being present in this moment, allowing yourself to be present with the feelings that are there, that are currently there and not feelings that are from the past. And for me, uh, this is where my X in the map is. I'm in this process of doing emotional healing processes, uh, asking for my team, uh, other people in my team to hold space for me and holding space for others to do their process, uh, to do their healing process. 
and and this is an invitation yeah for going into this journey of healing your emotions so that you can be present with your feelings so you can let your feelings be alive and bring aliveness to to the to to your life and to be playing a conscious game to be to have the energy to choose the games that you want to play and with this I'll, I'll end this video and thank you so much for watching and if you have any questions if you'd like to join please register send me an email and send me a message on telegram and i wish you a awesome journey in your path to reclaiming your power to play full out thank you and bye for now